Celebration is exciting because uh, a couple of reasons. One, I think, is sort of just will make sense, I hope. Y you know that when things break, they don't run so well. So in other words, you, you've, I'm sure, been in some system, your car, your, you've had a flat tire, you've, I'm picking extreme examples, but if you had a flat tire or a spark plug go out so that things weren't firing symmetrically, or if you had um, a fan with a blade that was failing, or a lawnmower that had some issue, uh, anything that gets out of symmetry and whack when it's rotating uh, suddenly catches your attention. Oh, I know, the most obvious one probably is uh, an old school washing machine. Like, I'm guessing you've had a washing machine get out of balance when it's spinning, the clothes fly to one side, and the thing looks like it's gonna walk across your basement floor, basically, right? Well, you know just from experience that the vibration on that system gets huge when it's not operating properly. And it could be as simple as the clothes just shifted in the washing drum to a place they shouldn't be. The problem is, that's bad in itself, it makes a lot of noise, but the other problem is it puts tremendous wear on the mechanical system. So there's a chicken and egg question. It could be that the vibration, due to some imbalance in the load, eventually breaks the machine. It could also be that something is slowly breaking in the machine and gradually causing more imbalance. So if a bearing's going or something like that, that may cause a vibration. But the net result is that as you accumulate more and more vibration, it tends to break things more and more, and eventually that's the path to failure for the machine. And knowing that means you may be able to remediate that earlier. In other words, do something as simple as redistribute the clothes or uh, you may be able to schedule maintenance earlier for that machine to replace something that you know is breaking or is gonna break. And that's why people often, not always, but vibration is often an important indicator of, of bad things, pathologies about to happen. In other words, the mission critical operators, pick who you want, will often either contract or themselves do vibration monitoring. And so, in other words, it is standard practice in a lot of mechanical uh, or electromechanical industrial operations for someone either continuously or on a periodic basis to have a meter connected to a machine and have a readout somewhere of what the vibration situation is for it. And that's a normal thing in a place where, the, as I said, it's a mission critical application. The problem with that we found, and that's why I was telling you about vampires, kind of interesting to me is a lot of the vibration measurement work is done either while the machine's just running all the time or on a special test. And in the special test, what will happen is people will maybe shut off a lot of things around the machine, turn on just exactly that machine, let it get settled, and then make a measurement. And the problem with that we've been finding is the machine, of course, has is, is been specially designed to do its least vibration, hopefully, under its normal operating conditions. So in other words, I, I hope that makes, I think that makes sense. It, it, you would want the washer to be as quiet as it could be during its normal spin cycle. So in other words, other than being off, which is as quiet as it's going to get, you'd expect to, to design the bejeebers out of the washing machine so that it was going to be not annoying <laughs> while it was doing its thing. And what that means is, if you make a vibration measurement on that machine while it's operating, you're basically checking it when it's designed not to be showing you anything. And what Vampire has let us play with is, because it's watching all the time and because it's self-powered and because it knows when the machine has been deactivated because it sees the instant the current turns off, and because it can continue to track vibration even when the machine is off, and know the speed of the rotor as it spins down. It's able to get a profile across the operating speeds as it goes from its, its spinning state all the way down and stops. And that's a very special time to be looking at the machine because it sweeps all the way through its mechanical characteristic. And so it gives us a look at the machine that's less common. The idea here is that we're trying to conduct a test that exposes the machine's health uh, by looking at it at some other time than when it's 
been specifically designed not to show you any problems, if that makes any sense. Now a stress test to me would imply something where we did something to it, so where we deliberately shoved all the clothes to one side or did some other thing to it to try to get it to show us a little bit of its flavor, you know, outside of the normal operating range. What I'm saying is, and this is what I'm so excited about with Vampire, the machine naturally, for free, does its own, I won't call it a stress test, but it does an outside of normal operation test for you every time it spins up and every time it spins down. And that's an incredible opportunity that's basically just missed if you follow me. In other words, I'm not stress testing the machine. The machine does it for itself. It offers you this wonderful opportunity to see it test its mechanical system as it spins down. And we're just leaving that on the table. It, it does this test for you. I'll give you some machines never shut off. So there are some that, you know, I, the ventilation system in this building, it's possible that it's blowing air 24-7 and the only time it would shut off is when there was a serious problem. But lots of other machines cycle. So they'll run for a while and stop, or they'll alternate operation to mix wear around different machines, or they'll have some other reason why they're going to turn on and off. And when they do, that's gold. <laughs> that is just free gold for us. If you happen to be there at the right time with the right uh, sensors that don't cost you too much money, uh, but allow you to collect this correlated picture of electrical, of vibration, maybe of temperature, and of speed without having to put a whole lot of frou fra around the machine. Very simple thing goes into it to get that information. That's an incredible opportunity to learn about it, what's going on. And especially when it's in a site where it really matters if that machine stays up. So I'll give you, there's some motors you probably don't care about. And that's fine, you know, you may not even want to pay the few dollars it would take for our system to go in there for a motor you're not too worried about. But for motors where you are worried, this is spectacular, in my humble opinion, you know.